Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to be putting together a circular array node group. While the basics of this node group are pretty simple, I am going to look at a couple other techniques we can use to extend the reusability of our nodes, especially if some of the nodes that your group contains have drop-down menus. So let's get into it. To get started, let's go to our Geometry Nodes tab and add a node tree to our default cube. For now, we'll use it as our input geometry, but we'll change that later. We're going to base our node tree around an instance on points and a mesh circle. So let's go ahead and add those. Our mesh circle is going to be our points and our input geometry is going to be our instance. To make this easier to see, I'm going to increase the radius of my mesh circle and I'm going to edit my original object just to make it a little smaller. So this is the basis of our node. At this point, I'm going to grab these two nodes and group them together with control G. I'll open up my end panel and go to group. Currently, my input is connected to my instance. So I'm going to rename that input to geometry. Other things that we're going to want to control are the number of times our geometry is instanced. That's based on the vertices of our mesh circle. So let's drag that to our input. We'll also want to control the radius of our circle. So we'll drag that over as well. Now, we could also pull over the rotation and scale of our instance on points to our input. And if I tab out of our node group, we'll see what kind of controls we now have. At this point, we have some basic control. One of the things that you'll probably want to be able to do is align your objects pointing away from the center of the circle. Let's jump into our node group and see how we can accomplish that. We're going to disconnect the rotation and remove it from our input. The simplest way to align the rotation is to use the normal of each point and then align the rotation of each point to that normal. We'll add an input, normal node, and since this is a vector and this is a rotation, we'll add the utilities align Euler to vector node. The vector we want to align to is the normal and we'll plug the rotation into the rotation of the instances. Immediately, we see that our cubes are now aligned to the center point of our circle. But let's switch out our cubes for something else so we can see the problem that arises here. I'm going to disconnect our input geometry and add something that's not symmetrical. Let's say a mesh cone. I'll plug that into my geometry. I'll reduce the scale. There we go. Now for something like these cones, we see that they're all pointed upwards. And maybe we want the pointy part of the cone to be pointing outwards from the circle. Let's go into our node group and see how we could do that. The key here are these three radio buttons. The axis to align to the vector. That means for our source object, which axis of that object should be aligned to the normal. In this case, it's the x-axis of our cone that's being aligned to the normal. Because cones have rotational symmetry on the xy plane, we won't see a difference between having this set to X or Y. However, if we change this to the Z axis of our cone being aligned to the normal, now the cones are facing the right way. At this point in Blender's development, we don't yet have input sockets for things like drop-down menus and radio buttons. So there's no way to pull these options out to the parent node group. And we don't want to necessarily have to go into our node every time we add something new that has a different alignment. So with a little work and some node duplication, we can actually come up with a way to control this from outside of our node group. What we're gonna do is have an integer input. When that integer is zero, we'll use the x-axis. When it's one, we'll use the y. And when it's two, we'll use the z. Then if it's three, we'll use a custom input. Here's how we're gonna do that. I'm gonna set this to x. And in my inputs, I'm going to add an integer input and call it axis. The minimum will be zero and the maximum will be three. What we want to say is when this is zero, we want to send this to the rotation. We'll add a switch node under utilities switch and set it to vector. The thing we want to switch on is when this axis input is equal to zero. To do that, we'll use a compare node. So we'll set this to integer mode and say when the axis is equal to zero and then plug that into our switch. When this is true, we want the output 
to go to the rotation. Now let's set up the next condition. We'll duplicate our compare. We'll add a new switch. So when the axis is equal to one, we want a new output. So we'll duplicate our align Euler to vector, set it to the Y input, and plug that into true. And then we'll take the output from this switch and plug it into the faults of our first one. So now, if the axis is zero, we'll use the X align Euler to vector. If it's false, we'll use this switch. When this switch is true, we're using Y. And finally, we can duplicate this again, set it to Z, and then plug that into false. At this point, when the axis is zero, this switch is true. And so we use this Euler to vector, which is set to X. When it's false, we come down to this switch. When the axis is one, this switch is true, so we use Y. If it's anything other than one, we use Z. But since there are some other options here, and we don't want to set up all the permutations, we're going to allow a custom input to go to this rotation. To do that, I'm just going to cut this last link, add in another switch, plug it into false, duplicate the equals again, and say when the axis is equal to 2, we'll use the Z. And if it's anything other than 0, 1, or 2, we'll use this false. And we'll drag that to a new input and we'll call this other align. If I tab out now, we're set to the x-axis, we're set to the y-axis, we're set to the z-axis. Then if I go to three, it's now this. At this point, we can control the amount of instances, the radius they're placed at, the xyz scale of each object, which axis they're aligned to, and have a custom alignment if we want. Let's add a few more options to our inputs to round out this node. I'm going to clean things up real quick. The next thing we want to be able to do is select which points we instance on, so that we don't have to instance on every point of our circle. To do that, we'll just simply drag the selection input from our instance on points over to our input. I'll go ahead and move that one up a little higher. Now I could do something like taking the index of our instance, adding a utilities math node, and setting it to something like modulo, adding a compare node, and saying equal to zero, and if I set this to two, I'd get every other point, or three, I'd get every third point. I could also set this to not equal, and then I wouldn't get every third point, or every fourth point. I could also do something like setting this to greater than, and only getting part of the circle. Finally, we want to be able to use the pick instance option of the instance on points node. Let's jump in. We'll drag pick instance over and we'll drag instance index over. Having out, we'll create a collection of objects to choose from. Now, if I use an input collection info node, choose my collection and use that as my geometry, I'll set it to separate children and reset children. Right now, it's instancing every object from my collection at each point. If I choose pick instance, now it will only choose one for each point. By default, the instance index is zero, so it's taking the first object from the group and instancing it at every point. If I were to add a utilities random value node and set it to integer, I could plug that value into my instance index. Since there were five objects in my collection, I'm just going to set the max to four. So now it's going from zero to four. And as you can see, this is randomly choosing an object from our collection for each point. So that gives us quite a bit of control over our node group. I'm going to name this circular array and call that good. One thing you'll want to make sure of is if you're not using a collection, don't have pick instance chosen. Also, an interesting thing you can do with this node is you can chain them. So, I could take this circular array and put it here, and now I have a circular array of all of my circular arrays. I hope this run-through's been helpful for you, and I hope you got something new out of it.
If you're interested in downloading this node, I've put it on my GitHub repository of some helpful node groups that I'm building. I'll put a link to it in the description. As always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome, and I really appreciate you taking the time to watch the channel. So until next time, I'll catch you later.